How high is the water, mama? Two feet high and rise. How high is the water, papa? She said it's two feet high and rise. But we can make it to the road in a homemade boat, cause that's the only thing we got left that'll float. It's already over all the wheat and oats, two feet high and rising. Hi right, guys, thanks for joining me here. Uh, we're moving along to um, basically an extension of your clothing, uh, which I believe is still part of your shelter. Um, you know, shelter is kind of the biggest thing uh, for exposure. Um, so if you aren't carrying a tent, um, maybe you don't have all the warm clothing you have, uh, your sleeping bag is an extension of that. Uh, there's some nice waterproof um, shells they're putting on sleeping bags nowadays. Um, you have the ability to add a bivy sack, which we'll get to in a second. Um, so you can get a nice shelter system. Uh, you know, if you're caught without the clothing uh, for the temperature, sleeping bags, you know, you just can't travel them. But you can hunker down and you can get through some good little storms uh, with a sleeping bag, even if you don't have proper clothing. Um, so I guess we'll start. I just sort of threw uh, the old a wool blanket in there as a, uh, a pretty basic system. You'll see the little baby emergency uh, bivy there um, that I talk about quite often. Um, weighs nothing. There's no reason not to have that in your pack. Um, and again, because it's not just a blanket and it's an actual sleeping bag bivy uh, that you can crawl into, you know, you're able to take your boots off, let your boots dry, let your feet dry. Um, you're able to sit on wet ground without getting wet. Now you're still going to be able to translate um, that cold uh, from the ground without insulation uh, so I don't recommend sitting directly on the ground um, but uh, and we'll get into a little bit more of that here um, that is a thermalite reactor uh, next to it and if I stand it up here you'll see it uh, it compresses pretty good it's a very small bag um, you could even get away with that just for summer uh, especially if you had that and a bivy um, a very lightweight combination uh, I've talked about that before. Um, actually, in those two on the end, if um, if you're going with uh, like in the summer and you're using that emergency bivy, I've, I think I'd mentioned it before, the, the get home bags, um, you're going to get some condensation, some sweating from your body. Um, your legs and stuff are going to want to stick to that plastic material. A uh, nice little liner um, is going to be able to use your liner and that bag, and now you have a waterproof summer bag. Uh, that you can easily use with a tarp system. Um, it's it's a great combination, and that is the ones that are in the the get home bag um, that I took out for this video. Um, in there, I believe the last section of the get home bag uh, video, I mentioned the um, the down jacket with the Gore-Tex shell. Um, I keep I do keep that in the behind the seat. Uh, it is used for sort of Max's bed or shelter in the winter, and it's also just nice to have an extra warm jacket uh, that's waterproof in there. Um, but you'll see in that orange compression sack uh, that you know that's pretty small for down uh, but if we move to the next one that green compression uh, sack that is the um, the only down sleeping bag I own uh, everything else you're gonna see is a synthetic uh, blend and that's just due to the the wet environment in the Northwest the fact that I've been up in the mountains and had a wet bag and without that synthetic um, you know insulation that it keeps me warm when it's wet I probably wouldn't be here talking to you right now um, you know so I the deal was really good I want to try out some down bags and for summer I was I was letting myself get the down bags now you're gonna hear people all all over gambit you know you might as well talk AK 47s or AR 15 arguments I mean you're gonna get the same group within the wilderness backpack community that's gonna argue synthetic over down that just needs to be your own choice and your own environment some people work uh, well, you know, if you condensate into the bag, your bag is going to pick up a lot of that moisture. Um, you know, there's many, many reasons why uh, synthetics I prefer anyway. Um, one of the things I still do, you'll see these other two bags over here. Um, they are in a Sea to Summit waterproof compression sack. Um, they actually have, I'll flip it over here, you can see the bottom is an Event. Uh, Event is a waterproof breathable uh, material. The rest of that sack is not uh, breathable at all. It's completely waterproof. And so what it allows you to do is that the air of the bag escapes out of the waterproof event. Um, it's a very similar to Gore-Tex. Some people say it breathes better than Gore-Tex. Um, you know, you're just gonna have to take your your marketing as what it is and try out the equipment. Um, to give you a little bit of weight, and I will pull these out of the bags here in a second. Uh, we'll see, hopefully this might end up going to a two-part video here. Um, 
but so the little little bag is a halo it's a 40 degree bag um, it is a down it is one pound nine ounces or 25 ounces um, it's under two pounds it is extremely light and you can see it's smaller than the jacket uh, which is tremendous uh, it has worked out I gotta tell you um, I've used it a couple times now this summer and I've really enjoyed it um, when I didn't even think that I needed a sleeping bag uh, and you know that wind kicked up just enough uh, so I didn't want to be laying just under a tarp um, it was really nice uh, let's go on uh, there's another option if you want to get a warmer version of that uh, there's a 25 degree halo um, it is just over two pounds it's two pound one ounce uh, so if you think 40 degrees is too high and you want to go the same REI halo um, which I gotta say that I'm really impressed with their design and their material and everything they do and they back up the products too uh, the next one you'll see there is a big Agnes um, it's called the enchantment or encampment uh, it's a 15 degree bag it is synthetic and it is three pounds 11 ounces so it's a little bit heavier one thing the big Agnes does is it's gonna be a bigger cut um, I am a larger guy I do enjoy having a little bit of extra room it allows me to wear a little bit extra clothing and still have some air loft in there to buffer that so you're not squeezed up against the side of a sleeping bag and that's gonna create you know you're gonna be crushing your insulation uh, when you do that and when you slip into a smaller bag so bags are something you, it's gonna be really hard to order off the internet and get a bag that fits you uh, the big Agnes allows me to have a bigger cut one of the weight saving things that they do in most of their bags is they don't put any insulation in the bottom and I'll show you here when we pull them out of the bag uh, what that looks like but with with all the insulation being crushed underneath you while you're laying on top of it it's not doing you a whole lot of good anyway and so what they've done is they've just put a sleeve out of the shell material for you to put your sleeping pad in so all you have is the, the insulation on top and I haven't had any problems with wind coming underneath or anything like that in fact I've used it quite a bit in the winter with my winter pad um, I'm super happy with it and uh, it's so comfortable um, it also has a lovely pocket uh, I'll show you here uh, you can make a pillow out of it um, that last one you see there is a part of the military modular system uh, if any of you guys google military modular sleeping bags you're gonna pull this up so that, again this is a heavier product um, the whole thing weighs almost eight pounds I believe um, I know the patrol bag the the green one is two pounds eight ounces the bivy itself, which we'll do in the bivy video, is two pounds five ounces, and the other one, the intermediate, is about it's three and a half, almost four. Um, so that does not have the bivy in it right now. Those are just the two bags, um, and you can see quite a bit of room it takes up. But that's two sleeping bags in one, and we'll go over the, the temps and stuff um, as we come up. But with this entire system, if you're wearing the proper clothing, uh, that bag will take you down to negative fifty. Um, now that's you know I'm sure that's with some sort of a shelter you're not completely exposed but you'll see the two bags fit inside of each other the bivy sack fits on on the outside of that and if you're wearing a good pair of winter thermals uh, yeah you're good um, it is my winter bag that I, I turn to uh, when I know I'm gonna need it uh, the green inner bag uh, is 30 degrees uh, it's comfortable down to 30 the black intermediate bag you're gonna get close to zero it's about 10 to 0 degrees you put them together and you're down to the negative 20s you had the bivy you're probably negative 30 and then you had another 10 degrees uh, you know 20 degrees with an actual good sleeping system uh, to keep you warm and uh, you know if you're out of the wind and uh, you're sheltered you know you're gonna be in good shape um, so you, you got to find out what what the power you know you, you want uh, light and fast and you know comfortable uh, you know for the nice halo bag um, you want to completely don't worry about shelter you know in your environment if you're not gonna be multiple days and you know you can get to your place within a day um, you could probably hold off with just those uh, emergency bivy and a nice liner um, even just a bivy sack uh, with that liner and we'll get to that in a little bit oh the sun's coming out how about that so let's pull all these out and I'll make a, a part two on here and we'll go over the bags